Now, 2,000 Millwall fans returned to their stadium for the first time on Saturday for the game against Derby County at the Den. The club later said they were dismayed and saddened by the actions of a section of their support. Now, the Millwall Supporters Club said that the booing of the players who took the knee uh, was not motivated by racism, but instead in opposition to the political views held by the Black Lives Matter organisation. Ben Bradley, the Conservative MP for Mansfield, agrees with that position. He tweeted to say, hardly a surprise, always said this would only last as long as fans were kept out. It's not the same as other unifying anti-racism campaigns. It's built on division, oppressors and victims. Now it's become a political party too and the Premier League should stop promoting it. Ben Bradley joins me now. So, look, Ben, given the history of Millwall, I guess it's very easy, isn't it, uh, for many figures on the left to say, look, this is just racism. This is just racism. These fans must be racist. But but you say? Well, uh, I think the tweet kind of sums it up, actually. Uh, you know, it's easy to pick on Millwall um, for, for the, some of the history and, and um, things there. But actually, it's something that millions of people across the country feel. If uh, the Guardian poll last week is to be believed, it's something that the country uh, disagrees with by uh, a ratio of three to one. They think this has made uh, racial division worse in our country. And, and it's all well and good to say, you know, we're just supporting the, the anti-racism message, um, you know, not Black Lives Matter with a capital B L M. Uh, but a small one, uh, it's easy to say, but that's not how people feel. And, you know, it, it doesn't work both ways. Government couldn't go out there and write conservative all over a uh, public sector, taxpayer funded things and say, oh, it's not a conservative party. It's just small C conservative and a set of values. Nobody would buy it. And with good reason. So um, I don't think it is just uh, a small section of Millwall fans that feel this way. I actually think it is the vast majority uh, of the country. Uh, and, you know, there are people frankly, who uh, are, are not looking sufficiently outward and not listening to people who are pretty frustrated by it all. Well, it is very interesting, that poll that, that you refer to, 55%, and by the way, this is a poll published by, by The Guardian, 55% of UK adults believe that Black Lives Matter and the protests have increased racial tension. Only 17% of folk uh, think that it has decreased tension. And interestingly, too, 44% of ethnic minorities feel that Black Lives Matter increased racial tensions. Yet the Premier League has embraced it, Ben Bradley, which could be a corporate mistake, I guess, from their point of view. But perhaps they are trying to show that football, which has been connected with racist fans in the past, has moved on. I think they are. And I, I talk to the Premier League a lot. I'm the chair of the All Party Group for Sport, um, you know, good friends of mine. And um, we, I've discussed this with them a lot. And, and I think their intentions are good. And it, it came from the players. I don't doubt that. And they've had some uh, excellent anti-racism campaigns in the past that were more unifying and more easy to support than this. But as I say, whatever people may say, it's not the, the organisation. It's just the, the kind of anti-racism message. You can't separate the two any more than you can um, conservative values from the Conservative Party yeah. in that way. And I think um, ultimately, if people feel that it is divisive, if people feel that, um, you know, it is creating these these labels and these groups set against each other, which is the whole premise, actually, of Black Lives Matter, uh, this critical race theory that says all white people are racist oppressors. Yeah. Um, when you live in a, an 80 percent white country, it's, it's no um, surprise at all that people will actually look at that and think, mm. I'm not actually, I, I feel like I'm pretty open and pretty tolerant. And this is one of the most open, tolerant um, countries in the world. Uh, so why should we accept that label? Why should we accept that definition mm. of... Not, not to mention and... that this organisation wants to defund the police, uh, which is highly, highly offensive to many Brits because we may have concerns with the way the police deal with certain things, but they are absolutely fundamental uh, to keep society safe and operating. Absolutely. And, and this isn't America, right? I, I don't think we are anything like in a position in terms of that, that no. racial division or tension with the police that we see in the States. Um, I think most people in this country have a huge amount of respect for our, our police and our police officers. I think if you ask most of my constituents, they would want more police. They would want more uh, tough law and order. 
uh, in this country. And that's certainly what we promised in the election that, that won us uh, a big majority. Um, but Black Lives Matter are, are openly and, and proud of being a political movement. Uh, the organisation, you know, it's um, tearing down capitalist structures as well as defunding the police. There's bits on their website about, um, you know, being against the kind of traditional family unit. Um, things that we all actually hold quite quite dear. Um, mm. You know, you can't separate uh, those words from that organisation, I'm afraid. Ben, isn't the problem with the booze, though, the fact that it now allows all of those hysterical people on the left, you know, be, be it Owen Jones, be, be it Piers Morgan, to start saying, oh, look, look, here we go again. Here are these racist football fans. If you're standing up for these people, you're scum, you're racist yourself then those fans feel even more disenfranchised. The culture war grows deeper and we're at each other's throats even more. Is there not a better solution than booing? I'm certain that there is, right? And and it's not a brilliant scenario by any stretch of the imagination, is it? I think um, nobody wants this, this division to grow. The challenge is, as I say, that this whole movement is built on that division between oppressors and victims and, and it creates that from its very basis. Um, so it's, it's difficult to avoid. And ultimately, if we are going to be in a position where anybody who disagrees with that caricature actually is, is painted as racist. We've heard Dion Dublin uh, in the last couple of days say, if you, if you disagree with taking the knee, you are a racist. I think mm. that's awful. Um, what, 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 what's this, of... so, so how do we wrap this up? I mean, look, Ben, I think back to earlier this year, right? For a period of time, I think it was eight weeks, we went out every Thursday night and we clapped for our carers. And and then quite rightly, the people who organised the campaign thought the NHS was out of the woods. We needed to return to some semblance of normality because we were over the very worst of that first peak of coronavirus. Does there need to be a discussion uh, between the clubs and the Premier League to say, this was a moment in time, we've raised a lot of awareness, but in fact, if we continue encouraging players to take the knee or encouraging clubs to allow players to take the knee, in fact, we're going to increase division. Does there need to be a conversation about how we could end this, appreciating it that it's yeah. made an impact? Yeah, and you know, it certainly raised the profile of these issues, right? Um, you can't deny that at all. But we are in a position where it needs it needs to wind up, right? It's causing more problems than it's solving. We've seen some clubs, uh, QPR, I think was was the example a few weeks ago that said, you know what, the meaning of this has been lost and we need to to move on. I think other clubs need to have that conversation. I've written to the um, the Premier League and said, look, you know, once these guys are registered formally as a political party, maybe it's time to move on. Yeah, it is perfect time. Ben Bradley, the Conservative MP for Mansfield, great to talk to you, Ben. Th